Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today we're going to be using Big O Notation, which we learned in the last video, and we're going to be using it to figure out why our adder is in this 8-tick deadlock. And we're also going to be using it to make an adder that is significantly faster than this. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, the first step to all this is figuring out why we're in this seeming 8-tick deadlock. Because, if you remember from our video on addition, we built this adder right here, which is 6 ticks for a single full adder, and creating 4 bits makes a total of an 8-tick adder. So, it takes 8 ticks for 4 bits, and each individual full adder cell is 6 ticks. But, if we make a faster one, a faster full adder cell, then we get this, where each individual full adder cell is 4 ticks. But this is still 8 ticks. Why is that? Well, we're going to walk through the process of addition again. Except this time, we're going to walk through it with big O notation in mind. We're going to look at when our number of inputs may have an influence on the speed of addition, and seeing which steps, or which step, might be causing us a problem. So, let's just break down this adder right here. First up is the half adder. We have input A, which I'm just going to change from our, my test wire. So, right now, ignoring everything else, just looking at this full adder right here, we have our half adder. Now, this is the first step in our addition process. It's where I take input A and input B, I calculate the first digit right here, and I calculate if there's going to be a carry over to the next digit right here. And that's the nature of the half adder. Now, if I look at all the half adders, you'll notice they're pretty much happening at once. I mean, it's really hard to create an argument that these half adders are going to somehow influence one another. So, as far as big O notation is concerned, the half adder step is O sub 1. It takes a constant amount of time it doesn't matter how it doesn't matter how many bits we have. The half adder addition step is always going to take however long our half adder is. So, that's the first step. Now, the next step is the carry. Now, all the carry does, that's what this big middle section right here. All the carry does is it takes if we get a digit in our half or full adder that is bigger than our adder can handle it takes that digit and it passes it over to the next adder and says, hey, the previous adder got a digit bigger than it can handle, you should add that on to whatever digit you're getting. And there it does that, and that goes into the next step. And you know, just looking at it at a glance, it doesn't appear that this would add any extra delay, because I mean, it goes over to the next digit, right here, okay, and this one goes over to the next digit, this one goes over to the next digit, you know, it doesn't appear at first that this would have any effect on the full adder speed. So, we're going to say for the time being that the carry is O of 1. Of course, this may turn out to be wrong, but we're just going to keep going and see what happens. So now, last step, we have our final half adder. It's where we take our first digit from our original half adder, and we add that to whatever carry we got. Now, that in itself doesn't take any extra time, because we concluded before half adders are O of 1. So, we still have O of 1 here. Here's what gets us into trouble, though. The last half adder can still generate a carry signal. So, we can go from this half adder back to the carry signal and go through. So, we can essentially go through this giant weaving pattern where we go down the carry line, through the half adder, back to the next carry line, through the next half adder, and so forth and so on. And just go through our entire adder like this. And you'll notice that is O of 1. So while passing the carry to the next bit might be O of 1, the carry itself, since it can carry from one bit all the way over to the end, it's O of n, because that depends on however many number of bits you have, how many times you need to carry. So therein lies a problem. This is why we're sort of bounded by this 8 tick mark. And if you notice, when I count, so this is an AND gate, so it's two ticks, so it goes to another gate, two ticks, so I'm four ticks, six ticks, 
8 ticks. That's why our adder has been 8 ticks. Even though the adder cell is only 6 ticks, the adder was already done. The things that have been causing us to delay the entire time is the carry line. Carry is over. So, how do we get around this? How can we create an adder that doesn't have this giant carry problem? This giant situation where carry just ripples through the whole ladder in this giant weaving pattern. In fact, this is why this form of addition has become known as ripple carry, because the carry has to ripple through all the bits in order to know the result. So, we're going to see if we can come up with a little bit of a better way of doing it, because this clearly is not the most efficient way you can go about this. So, to start the process of speeding things up, let's start with what we don't need to speed up. Because, if you remember, our half adder in the first step, that's O of 1. So, we're going to keep working with our O of 1 half adder. Why? Well, it's still O of 1. There's no point in making it any faster if it's already, algorithmically, as fast as it's ever going to be. So, there is our half adder. So, there we go. There's our carry signal, there's our output, and there. So now, here are my inputs, input A and input B. And let's just go ahead and use WorldEdit and stack this for a couple bits. So, I'm going to go here to position 1, and I'm going to go here and select position 2, and I'm actually going to expand 1, and I'm going to stack 3. That will give me 4 half adders. So we're at the 4-bit step. And this right here is O of 1. This will consistently take a maximum of 3 ticks for our half adder. So, we have 3 ticks, and it's going to take 3 ticks no matter how many bits we have at this point. So, let's take a look at how we can make our carry faster. And I think the good way of doing this is first just labeling the terms which go into the carry. Because right now, we have this wire, which goes straight to the carry, so clearly this is going to influence the carry. And this wire, while it may not be obvious how this influences the carry, if I go back to my ripple carry adder over here, you'll notice that if I'm getting this wire and we're getting a carry over here, that can also generate a carry signal. So, we're going to label these. This way it's just a little bit more clear what's going on. So, this top wire right here, the one that goes straight into the carry signal, I'm going to call this the generate. The reason it's called the generate? Well, if this wire's on, we've generated a carry signal. So it's called the generate. And as a label, I'm just going to call this G0. The reason is, this is half adder 0. For this one, it's going to be G1. For this one, it's going to be G2. For this one, and G3. If I had more, I'd go on further and further, and, but yeah. Now this bottom one. The way this influences the carry is if I'm getting this, it's actually it's probably better demonstrated with this half adder. So if I'm getting this signal, and we have to generate from the previous signal, that will create a new carry signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this signal the propagate. Why am I calling it the propagate? Well, if we're getting this signal, and we've generated a carry signal in the adder before it, it propagates the carry signal over. So the carry signal from before will influence this one if there's one before. So yeah, I'm going to call this P1, since we're in this one. And this is P0. Now that's a little bit confusing, it would, because I do realize I've confused... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is a bit confusing, because I've realized I've explained that a bit confusingly. Think of it like this. So let's say this is... These are the signals from our half adder. So, these are propagate signals, and these are the generate signals. And I'm just going to do this one just for simplicity. If I have a generate signal, or if I just have a carry signal in general, so let's just say this is any carry signal in general, normally this will not have any effect on this wire right here. There shouldn't be any interaction. But, if I'm having both of these on, then that will create a new carry signal. So if I'm having both A and B, then I get a new carry signal for this bit right here. And if you think about it, that's just doing the same thing as this AND gate right here. So, same process, 
I'm just giving it a fancy name. And yeah, so now that hopefully that's all cleared up, let's talk about how we can do our carry faster. So, yeah. So, instead of just sitting here waiting for a new idea of how to do carry comes to us, let's take advantage of what we've already done, because we've already confirmed that this part of the addition process is O of 1, and now we have the wires that come out of them defined. So maybe this alone could take our already existing ripple carry model, and maybe somehow we can use this new knowledge to create a faster carry system just from that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with my propagate wire. I'm just going to move this out a bit. And the reason I'm going to move it out is because, let's face it, we have no idea how big our new carry system is going to be. So I'm going to see how far that is. And yeah, that's perfect. I want it that far. And yeah. So, so there. So this is my wire. And now, the carry. What on the world is the carry for this? Well, actually, if you think about it, since we have no adder before this, this right here is just going to be the carry-in, or CI, just to keep it short. Let's carry it. And I can just XOR these together. And that should give me the result of my addition. Now you may think, well wait, don't I have to send this back? Well, no, because if you remember, Russ was causing us trouble in the first place. So we're going to see if we can avoid doing this. So, this is our first bit of addition. What's our carry? Our carry is just the carry-in. Okay, so that's worked out for us so far. Now this one. So, I'm going to XOR this with my previous carry. So, now, here's the question. What's our carry? Well, this is actually a little simpler than you might think, because there are only two ways we can have a carry. First off, if we generate a carry signal, obviously we're going to have a carry signal. So if this thing's on, we're pretty much going to have a carry signal, no matter what happens. So, that's one way we can get a carry signal. The other way we can get a carry signal is with this propagate thing right here. If our if our propagate is on, and our previous carry is on, that means that we're going to generate a carry signal. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take an AND from this. And the reason I'm going to take an AND from this is because our carry in is available to us as a start of the addition. So there's going to be absolutely no way to get this carry signal, so this, in theory, should still be O of 1 time. So that's one way we can get a carry signal, and the other way is from the generate. So I'm actually going to just move this over a bit. And yeah. So, first off, that's a long wire, so let's make sure the signal actually reaches. Okay, it does. So, this signal, I can say, okay, so it's our either we are propagating, and we have the our previous carry, our carry-in. So, I'm just going to put it right next to it, I'm going to let that mean and, or, I'm going to use plus to mean or, or, we're generating a new carry signal. So, not capital G, there. So, if we've generated a carry signal, or we're propagating, and we have a carry before it, we get a new carry signal. And so far, this is all O of 1. There's absolutely no extra delay, because everything we're using is available to us at the start of the addition process. So, that's right, this so far is working out great. Now let's move on to the next bit. Let's see if this whole process keeps up. So, I'm going to move on to my next one. And there. So, this is either going to be the propagate from this one. So, there we go. Or, it's going to be the new carry. Now, what's the carry? Well, it's going to be pretty much the same thing, right? It's going to be if I propagate 1, or carry 0, it's going to be propagate 1 and carry 0, or I just have generate 1. And this is when we have a bit of a problem, because we have to calculate 
carry zero. Carry zero involves doing some extraneous calculations, and this these types of terms aren't available to us in O of 1 time. After O of 1 stuff, i.e. the half adder and the carry in, after all that's done, we have to do some computation, and then, after that computation, we can calculate this. So we have to wait for some previous computation to actually get this, this carry zero term. And we don't like this. So how do we get rid of this carry zero term? How can we avoid having to use it? Well, this actually is a little bit simpler than you might think at first, because you might think that, well, we're going to have to do all this really complicated calculation and stuff, and... Well, no, it's actually not that hard at all. If you remember from math class, there's this thing you can do called substitution. If you have some other way of creating a variable, you can substitute it in. So the question is, do we have another way of getting carry zero? Guess what? We do. If we can, instead of using carry zero, we can use propagate one and carry in or g zero. So the same process, and we can just substitute that for this. And this will work because all of these terms are available to us as soon as the addition process starts. They're all available to us in O of 1 time. So this will speed up our carry calculation because we don't have to wait for carry 0. So instead of doing that, I'm going to say propagate 1. And instead of carry 0, I'm going to plug in my carry calculation. So propagate 0, carry in, or g0. And of course, I have all this or g1, and this calculation right here is both defined in terms of things that are available in O of 1 time, and it's also perfectly legitimate as a carry calculation. So, all we have to do now is set up this slightly more complex equation. One final thing before we implement this, though. This isn't the nicest way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distributive property, that's right, we're doing algebra, to say, it. To just get rid of the parentheses, because the parentheses just make it look more confusing than it is. So, I'm getting P1 and P0 and carry in, or P1 and G0. And the way I got that is I just distributed the P1 for the parentheses, just like in math class. And all of this, or G1. And you'll notice... This gets us a pretty fair... well, yeah, it's pretty easy to implement this. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, our first calculation, P1 and P0 and carry in. So, first off, I'm going to need P1 and P0. So, P1 and P0, so I'm just going to, I'm going to do this, so I'm going to do it like this, so there's invert A, there's invert B, So, P1 and P0 and carry in, or P1 and G0. So, this is one ca yeah, This right here is, is one possible way our, our carry can be. So, I'm just going to leave this here. Probably not going to get the output from there, but just going to leave it there for now. Next, P1 and G0. So, this is G0. This is P1. So, G0. And P1. What I'm going to do this is like this. So, and P1. So, I'm going to do this again just to indicate we've got it. And, oh, I actually screwed this one up because I forgot the carry in. So, all of this and the carry in, but that's actually easy enough to do. I'm just going to, first off, drag this wire over a bit. That just gives. Yeah, that just lets me take it to the actual location where I need it. And this right here will give me an AND between all of these. So, yeah. Mm. So there's a couple... those are two of the ANDs I can potentially get. And... no pun intended... Yeah, and there's the or between them. 
So now there's only one more calculation that could possibly create all this. And that's just having G1. So actually one thing I want to look at is... Um, will this cause issues? Yes, it will. Okay. So I'm just sorry, I just noticed a slight issue right here. If this thing turns on right here, this torch... Oh, well, you get the idea. If I turn that torch on, that can actually cause backflow. And I don't want that. So, to fix this, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that wires don't travel down glowstone. And I'm going to have a piece of glowstone right here. So that way, our carry signal doesn't backflow. And we're going to do the same thing right here. This way, actually, just to make it a little easier to set up. So now where's G1? There we go. There. This way, it just we don't get a backflow. And now, with all this done, this gets us our next carry. So, there we go. We've got most of our carry, our new carry adder already set up. We just need to do the final bit right here. Okay, so now for the last bit, I'm just going to build my XOR, just like before. So, same thing I've done for all the other bits. And, yeah, okay, now connect the propagate. And there we go. So, now all we need is this carry calculation. So to start off with, we're going to... Oh, that's... Wait, what? Uh, well, um, okay, that's a little interesting. It's not the right equation, but it's interesting. The actual equation is P2 the carry for the previous one, which I believe was carry 1, yes, plus G1? Is that correct? I believe this is correct. I'm going to check just to make sure. P0... No, okay. So I did it wrong. I'm, I'm good. Okay. So the actual equation should be... Okay. P2, carry... Yeah, carry one plus G two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I've had a little bit of a. I'm sorry. I was just really caught off guard by the sign already having an equation written on. So please forgive me. Anyways, so now this is our default equation. Now we have the same problem as before. This carry right here. Well, we already have it, so we're just going to plug in this equation into it. So right above it, I'm going to make a sign, and it's going... Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. It... <laughs> Just, what is this? Uh, okay, uh, someone is clearly screwing with me, but... Eh. Aha, didn't have that time. Okay, so anyways, after weird sign madness, let's try this again. So I'm gonna do P2, actually gonna adjust so I can see that equation better. So I'm going to do P2, I'm going to substitute, so P2 or P1, P0, carry in. Actually, whatever, I'll just distribute at the same time. So, you know, same thing, so I'm going to distribute. So I'm just taking the same equation, as you can see over there, slightly grayed out, and I'm adding P2 to it, I'm distributing P2 into it, or P2, G1. All this, or G2. And this right here should be the carry calculation. So first off, I'm going to start with the most complex one. P2, P1, P0, and carry. So how do we get this? Well, clearly we need AND. So first off, we need AND between P0, P1, and P2, and the carry. So that's going to be a little bit tricky to do with all this wiring. So I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to go down here. And I'm just going to dig a tunnel. So, there we go. Now we have a tunnel. And what this tunnel is going to do is going to be part of a giant AND gate. So, this is the AND wire. And that's why I don't have to worry about getting some interesting wiring for all of this. I can just do it through this tunnel right here. So, P2, P1, P0. This should be the AND between all those. This is... P3, so that shouldn't be part of it, and P2, so now what about P... 
So now carrion. Carrion has to be part of this, so I'm going to take this down and going to go to right here. And if I do this, that should be a giant and gate for the carrion. So to get that, I'm going to give some space. And this right here is going to be where I output my hand. So, where are you, elusive hand? Oh, right, not here. Just time set zero. I believe that should reach, so I'm just going to go over here. And yeah, so now I'm going to count this out so I'll make sure it reaches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so that reaches. That's the first condition. Now I need to order that between P2 and P1. And, P and G0. So P2 and P1. So P2 and P1. And G0. So where's G0? That's all the way over here. So I'm just going to take this over this. Whoops. And I'm going to go over here and there. And G0. So that's that one. And I'm going to just of course, I'm going to eventually invert and send over there, but now nah, why not do it right now? Okay. So let's do that right now. There. Next one, P2 and G1. So this right here is P2 and G1, right? Right. So where's G1? G1 is right here. Hmm. Getting it past here is going to be a bit interesting, but doable. So perhaps that's not the best choice. I'll decide where to do that later. Right now, though, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do and. This first and. And this between. Yeah. And to get the other part of the and, I'm going to do like. That's not going to work. OK. So yeah, the wiring does get a little bit interesting. But it's all perfectly manageable. So, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to do it directly above. So like this. Now that should be right there. Perfect. All I need to do is power that. That gives me instant access to that. So that's nice and easy. Actually, just to make this a little bit nicer and easier. There we go. Now lastly, I just need to power that somehow with that. So, how will I do this? I think the easiest way is just having a torch, say, hmm. Can I actually get power? No, freaky. <laughs> there we go. The question is, can I somehow power this? Yes, appears I can. Okay. So I'm going to do an interesting archway with my propagate. And in the meantime, I'm going to also exchange my current option for that. So that's right there. Now that should be a little bit easier. So there we go. So now all that. And now that's is done. I can move this over. Just do like that. Should be a little easier. I can go down here. There we go. And yeah. So, more interesting wiring. And final wire is... Or I'm just getting G2. So, G2, where are you? You're right here, aren't you? Of course. The one that's going to be ridiculously hard to get out. Actually, surprisingly simple to what I had expected. Or, where is it? Hmm... I'm going to break the G3 sign, because I'm hoping, by this point, you know what it is. And I'm also not going to end up even using it in the end, so... Hey, there you go. So, G3, we're not actually going to end up using. And I'll just move this up. So, there. This might actually not reach. I don't think it will, but I'll try anyways. So, I'm going to try, and it does not reach. Did not think so. Okay. Worth a shot. So... The other option is something a little bit more interesting. Instead of inverting it there, I'm going to just take the raw powered wire 
I'm going to invert it here. That just makes it that much easier. I can bring G3 back. At least the wire. The sign, it can keep being stayed away. So there. Now, if I did not miss anything, this should be our completed new adder, which should compute without any extra carry propagation delay. It should be O of 1. So, let's go ahead and test it out. So, for input A, I'm going to put in... Actually, it's input B, but I'm going to put in 3. And I'm going to add 5. Let's see if it comes up with 8. What do you know? This thing can add. The question, though, is how fast can it add? So, well, that's the question. So what I'm going to do is, actually just for fun, I'm going to test the carry-on. Because why not? So I'm going to add... 7. I'm going to add the carry in. So, carry in. Boom. Notice how fast that propagation is. It's just, it's almost instant. It's crazy. So we have really fast carry propagation. But the question is, how fast is this thing? Like I said before. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wire here. And we're going to see how long this thing is. So, send power here. If that does not reach, how far over do I need to move it? To make it reach, one, two, three, four. Mm, I'll just put a repeater. Okay. So, we put a repeater here. That should add one. And, oh. Well, that's smart. Okay, now that should cause a carry across all bits. And it does. So now we're going to see how fast this new adder is. It's so just going to take this over. That should go into a piston. That should go into a piston. Now this does not reach by two blocks. Two blocks, too short. Okay. Let's try eight ticks. That's what it was before. And we will need an extra repeater f to account for that repeater. So, it is indeed faster than our previous 8 ticks. So fast is it? 7 ticks? It's a little closer. 6 ticks. So, that confirms this is O of 1 speed. You know why? Because, our, remember, our individual adder cell is 6 ticks. We didn't change the individual adder so, we just created this absolute carry monstrosity right here, which should compute an O of 1 time. And it does. So, in effect, that makes this a 6 tick adder. If I instead did this with my other adder design, which is 4 tick so, this should be 4 ticks. This completely negates carry delay. And this creates something called a carry look ahead adder because you have a specific piece of hardware designed to calculate the carry. That's as opposed to a ripple carry adder, where the carry is sort of just calculated as it goes along. You do calculate, oh, there's half adder, got some sum, do next carry, got some sum, do next carry, got some sum, do next carry, yada yada yada. This just says, okay, do half adder, do carry, do sum. Done. And just for fun, let's see if turning it off makes it go any slower. Because, in theory, it might, but... Mm, okay, so that actually does add an extra tick. But, in, again, in theory, that should be fixed with the adder cell. I believe that has to do with the fact that this XOR takes three ticks on one edge, or... Yeah, it takes three ticks to turn off, instead of two. But, again, if you use faster XOR, all this problem should go away. If you use faster adder cells, yeah. But, yeah, so... Carry look at addition. It's really fast, but as you can see, the wiring is pretty ridiculous. And these equations, they only get bigger as time goes on. So, at least as it sits right now, this might not be your best choice of addition, just based on size and complexity. If you want to build a really, really fast and complex adder like this, it's most certainly possible. The wiring will be insane, to say the least, but it is indeed doable. And your adder will be very, very fast. Your carry calculation will happen, theoretically, pretty much instantly. 
it's not truly instant. You're always going to have some, you know, the carry calculation is still a step, but it's going to be a lot faster than ripple carry. But like I said, this might not be the best choice. Even though we now have an algorithm that's O of 1, maybe there's a way that doesn't require quite as much wiring congestion. Maybe there's a way that's a little bit more modular. And that's what we're going to take a look at in the next video. We're going to look at to see if there's a little bit of a better way of doing this. So, yeah. And if you want to use this method, this is a perfectly legitimate method of doing it. It's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. And you're most certainly free to use this in any form of addition you want to do. It's a very, very fast and very, very powerful method of addition. The only downside, again, is size and complexity. But yeah. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. And I'll see you in the next video, where we'll start talking about little ways we can make this just a tad bit more manageable. So thank you. And...